Today we're going to show you the beautiful seaside resort of Porto Cervo in Sardinia, Italy. Stick around and we're going to take you on a virtual tour and we'll tell you all you need to know about this amazing place. So stay tuned! Hi everyone, I'm Rick. And I'm Andrea. And today we will show you around one of the most expensive resorts in the world. And it's Billionaire Playground. Mm -hmm. But first, if you like travel related video, now it's a great time to go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below so you will never miss any future video. That's great advice. Porto Cervo is the capital of the Emerald Coast, or the Costa Smeralda, like I said in Italian in the northeast part of the island of Sardinia. The name Emerald Coast comes from the emerald green color of the water of the ocean in this particular area of Sardinia. And look at this water. The resort town was founded in 1964 by Prince Karim Aga Khan IV. And he and some investors were looking for a spot to build a new seaside resort uh, in the early 60s, before I was born. Mm -hmm. Before I was born too. They found this natural harbor with pristine water, beautiful landscape, and dramatic granite rocks. The project of the resort was made by some of the most famous architects of the time, like Luigi Vietti and designer Jacques Cuell. Since the building of the old port and the village, the resort grew and more areas were added. Now you might ask, how can I reach Porto Cerro? Well, you can reach Porto Cerro by plane from the Olbia Costa Smeralda Airport, located about 30 kilometers south of the resort. You can also travel to Porto Cerro by ferry boat from Livorno or Civitavecchia on the mainland. These ferries will either take you to the port of Olbia or Golfo Anch and both are about half an hour south of Porto Cervo by car. The ferry ride is about 8 hours long and we strongly recommend traveling at night and be sure to get a cabin. If you want to know more about taking the ferry to Sardinia, there is a great video you can check it out. Great advice. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so there's five main areas in Porto Cervo to visit. The Old Town, This is the first part of Porto Cervo to be built. Its main core is the Piazzetta, the little piazza. In the old town, you can find all the high-end stores and boutiques. Next, we have the old port. This was the original port built in the 60s to accommodate the large yachts visiting Porto Cervo. Nowadays, it's still an important part of the port and some of the biggest private yachts dock here. Also, it has an area called the waterfront with some great bars to sit and sip a cocktail or a glass of wine while watching the boats. Absolutely, and the old port and the Piazzetta are connected by a bridge. Next to the new port, we have the promenade. This is one of the newest additions of the village of Porto Cervo. Here you can find some great shops, art gallery, restaurants and bars. It is the perfect place for an afternoon stroll while watching the amazing murals on the wall of this area. Check them out. The new marina was built in the 70s to accommodate the increasing number of yachts and boats visiting Porto Cervo. It can accommodate more than 700 vessels, ranging from a few meters long to an extra large one, like 100 meters and more. Mm. Overlooking the new port, you will find the exclusive yacht club Costa Esmeralda. Porto Cervo is also very famous for some of the best regattas in Europe, like the Rolex Maxi Yacht Race that is hosted here each September. Mm -hmm. And finally, overlooking the old town, the little church of Stella Maris. 
This overlooks the old port, the new port, and some of the arbor outside. And some of the, you can have some of the best view of Porto Cervo from here. Right, so near Porto Cervo, you can also uh, enjoy some amazing beaches. And this is where you're going to find Andrea and I when we're there. Well, maybe I shouldn't say that, but anyway, <laughs> look. Okay, so the famous ones are Alicia Ruya, also called Long Beach. This is the biggest and longest of the beaches in Costa Smeralda. It's located about 15 minutes south uh, of the main village, and to get there, you'll need to drive just a few short minutes on a dirt road. The beach has white and pink sand with shallow blue water. And on the beach, there are a few restaurants, bars, and lots of areas for sunbeds. Next, we have Calugranu. This is the closest beach to the main village, and it's also known as Orange Beach to the locals. It only takes a few minutes to drive there to, to reach it. It's also possible to reach this beach in approximately 20 minutes um, from the village. Walking. Oh, right, by walking. <laughs> the beach has white sand and turquoise water, and on the beach it's also possible to rent chairs and umbrellas. Moving on, we are Romazzino Beach. This beach is located about 20 minutes uh, by car from the main village of Porto Cervo. It has white coarse sand and spectacular clear water. It's definitely a treat. And another very famous beach is the Principe Beach. This is probably one of the most famous beaches in the area and one of the busiest. From the parking lot, there's about 15 minutes walk to reach the beach and downhill going there, but that mm. it's uphill. The beach has powdery white sand and shallow turquoise water. Unfortunately, the beach is pretty small and very popular, so it can be one of the busiest beach uh, during the peak season. Mm -hmm. But if you go there on off season, it's actually quite magnificent. Exactly, and if you're worried about the uh, the walk back, there's actually a little uh, there's a, tuck -tuck. yeah, a little tuck tuck that can uh, that can help you out. And uh, there's also a few nearby attractions from Porto Cervo that's also worth a visit. For example, the Ma Madalena Archipelago. This is probably one of the best excursions to do in the area. And it's best enjoyed by, by visiting on a small boat. For example, you can take a charter boat that shows the highlights of the archipelago. And by the way, Here's a video about a boat tour of Madalena up here. Next, we have the Naragi. These are old towers built by ancient Sardinians thousands of years ago. And they're common all over the island. Some are very well restored and can be visited. Near Porto Cervo, uh, there are a couple that can be explored uh, right in the town of Arzacena. And here's a video about the Naragis. We missed the last year. Lastly, we have the charming little town of San Pantaleo. This village is located on top of the mountain, about 15 minutes drive from Porto Cervo. This beautiful town has some amazing little art and crafts to store. Also, there's uh, some cute place to eat and enjoy the drink at night. And also has host a very busy and popular market on every Thursday. Come? Venite a trovarci in Sardegna a mangiare il miglior pecorino. Cheese. Little further up, the Santa Teresa, Castel Sardo, and the north coast of the island are a beautiful place to explore. The cute town of Santa Teresa is the gateway to Corsica, and from downtown Santa Teresa, you can see the white chalky cliff of Bonifacio in Corsica. The north coast of Sardinia is rugged, wild, and very beautiful with some incredibly wide sandy beach with turquoise water. Definitely worth the ride. Mm -hmm. Castel Sardo is the further attraction and it's an old fortress built on top of a hill overlooking the blue Mediterranean water. It is a beautiful village to explore and learn about the old history of Sardinia. Yeah. Well, folks, uh, we hope you enjoyed this virtual visit to Porto Cervo, Sardinia. If you guys have any questions, leave us a comment below. We love to respond to all of you. And we will see you in our next video. Ciao. Bye, guys.